Well, hello everyone and welcome to another episode here on the MI Gardener channel. I'm so excited for this complete growing guide because we're going to talk about a new one today and that is lemongrass. This has been a very commonly requested growing guide ever since we popped this one in this herb bin here. I've had people commenting, hey Luke, you want to do a growing guide on that lemongrass now that you got it growing? I said, uh, you know, let it grow a little bit so that, um, so that it looks really good for the videos because a lot of times people don't like the growing guides that we do uh, because sometimes we don't have the plant fully growing yet and they say, well, how do you know it's a growing guy how do you know it's going to grow and I said well trust me it's going to grow you know but sometimes it's nice to have a, a nice mature plant here so the plant it's not yet fully mature but it's definitely on its way um, and uh, so I wanted to just take some time to talk about the, the lemongrass here and how to grow it and hopefully you all are going to try it it is an easy one to grow and I cannot stress that enough that if you have uh, if you do not have a green thumb you are going to be able to grow this plant still. Um, it is a grass, so it actually will do extremely well like most grasses. It's not um, what you consider, it's not like a, a very invasive grass, but it is. In, it can be invasive in certain areas that don't get a frost or a freeze. This is not a perennial, this will die back. So for those of you that are hoping to um, grow this year after year, you have to be, you have to be in zone eight or lower and you can grow it. Um, you do have to have some protection in zone eight. So zone nine, I'm imagining you could probably grow it year round. Um, now the thing you need to know about this grass is that it is a, it's a nitrogen hog. That's the only thing that you really have to make sure is in the soil in large quantities. Phosphorus and potassium, it takes up just like about any, any other plant. But because it's a grass, it focuses on leaf production and leaves uh, basically use nitrogen and that's their main thing to grow and they use other things as well but nitrogen is the main component in leaf growth so make sure that you have a really good nitrogen rich fertilizer in there like I've said on all of our growing guys we use trifecta on all of our beds because it's a real good all-purpose fertilizer but you was, use what you want blood meal is a very good nitrogen rich fertilizer as well but it doesn't have some of those other uh, you know the phosphorus and potassium that the plant obviously will appreciate now the next thing is space these are something that you can really cram in there because they're a grass. Grasses don't have much spacing requirements, which is so nice. Now, obviously, it's, it grows from a center, uh, like a center crown, and the crown will expand as the season goes. But because of the fact that um, mainly it shoots out stalks upwards and it's thin and wispy, you can plant stuff very close. Like as you can see here, we've planted basil around here. We actually have some Thai basil to make some you know, Thai lemongrass soup love it by the way um, but we have some Thai basil here and some lemon basil and uh, and it, they're they're planted so close to this plant that you know most people they'd be afraid of planting this close but because the the, the leaf the the grass uh, leaves basically go right through the plant and uh, and there's no harm there now the thing you do have to worry about is sunlight because it is a grass it needs lots of sun you won't be able to grow this in, in any less than five hours of sun and we're talking full sun this garden here gets about 10 to 11 hours of, of full sun in in uh, midsummer so like right in the mid part of summer you're going to get the peak the peak amount of sunlight um, and the next thing too is watering oftentimes people worry about oh am i watering this plant enough am i watering this plant uh, too much uh, and with lemongrass, you don't have to worry about watering. That's one of the things I love about it. It's a grass, so it, it sends roots really deep, which we'll talk about what that, that uh, has another requirement. But it sends the roots super, super deep into the soil. I guarantee you in this bin, they're already down at the bottom. We have about 12, uh, about 14 inches of really good growable soil. And I guarantee you they're, they're way down there and they're looking for that water. So if you, they're drought tolerant. So if you forget to water, they're gonna be very forgiving for you and they're not gonna die. Um, and then the next thing is, like I said, with the big root system, you have to make sure, have to, have to, have to make sure that the soil is really loose because of the fact you need those roots and they're wiry, they're wispy, wiry, hairy roots. They're not really long and chunky. So they're not gonna fight through some of that soil. And if you have hard packed soil, they're not gonna go down very far and they're not going to do their optimum because they, they're grasses. They like to send their roots down super deep. So uh, like I said, uh, a minimum of 10 inches of really good loose soil and you're gonna do great. They do awesome in containers. I've put them in containers before. They do super good. Now when it comes to harvesting, I get this question a lot. With harvesting, what can you harvest and what can't you harvest? With leaves, you do not, I mean, they smell good, but this is not what you eat to cook. 
What you want to use to cook is actually the center stalks. So when you pick off a stalk, come in close, you're not going to see anything from that far away, I guarantee you. So come in close, I'll show you what I'm talking about. All right, so with the center stalks here, what I'm talking about is these right here. If you can, I should have brought a knife, but there we go, I'll crack one off there. So what you're seeing here is the leaves. Those don't matter. This does not matter. And this does not matter. So what you have here now is a center stalk. You just wanna peel off all the leaves and you're left with this center stalk here. You can even pick off that leaf there. And you have these. Now this is, this is gonna get much, much bigger, but you can use this just as is. And I'm telling you what, wow, that is so lemony and so delicious smelling that uh, you just have to be here. You have to actually smell it for yourself to believe it but it's just like someone squeezed a lemon right in front of your face. Um, and this is great here to use. And that is how you harvest it. You do not use the leaves, or the, the grass leaves, and uh, you do not use the roots. You don't use anything else but the center stalks. So uh, that's really, it's really simple once you actually know what you're harvesting. And uh, yeah, it produces a lot. I mean, my goodness, we have like easily probably 50 to 60 stalks in here that we can use and they get thicker too. see this one right here this is a beautiful thick stalk here that's probably at least double in size from from the one we just uh, harvested so um you know they're like i said not difficult to grow not difficult to harvest and so that's why i recommend growing it because it's uh, it's a great one for some beginners and the very last thing that I thought I would mention is temperature. Now this one um, seems almost like a given, but because of the fact that it, it, it originated in uh, Thailand, the temperatures in Thailand are not super cold. So you wanna make sure that you plant it out in the garden when it's above 40 degrees at night. Because of the fact that it's going to go through some stress, you'll find that the leaves will kind of turn purplish. And so don't worry, if, you, if your leaves start turning a little purple on the edges, in fact, ours are turning purple in a little bit of areas because it's, it gets chilly here at night sometimes. What happens is the fact that the, the leaves will actually turn kind of purple. And a lot of people think it's a phosphorus deficiency. It's not, I promise. It's just cold weather. And as soon as the weather warms up again, all that all that purple will, um, I mean, it'll stay there, but all new growth will stay green. So uh, that's really it. Hopefully you all enjoyed. Hopefully you learned something new. Try lemongrass. It is a great plant to grow. It is um, something that we grow a lot because of the fact that it gives off great oils for pest control. It's good for cooking. You can dry it. You can, uh, you know, you can turn it into tea. It's just, it's a, it's a great all-around plant. So uh, I recommend trying it. Let me know in the comments box below if you've tried it and the luck you've had with it. And uh, that's it. I'll talk to you all later. Hopefully you all enjoyed. This is Luke Kern, the My Gardener channel. Grow big or go home. Bye.